Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I installed the Command AP60B Cruise Control on my Mitsubishi Delica. Please note that I am not an expert, uh, this is just a DIY guide and you do everything within this video at your own risk. Let's talk about tools. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, a socket set, some side cutters, some pliers, some zip ties, uh, you'll need a wire stripper, you'll need some small eye terminals, some rust guard, a multimeter, and a power drill with a socket attachment. At this point you might find it useful to um, move the intercooler out of the way. There's just four bolts, two at the front here, and then two at the rear. When you're pulling it out be careful of these uh, electrical cables here. So in order to get to the throttle linkages in there, we need to get the batteries out. <coughs> so remove the batteries, and then you'll have better access. And now, we can actually see, we get this out of the way, that's the throttle there. And there's that little red bit, and that red bit is the actual throttle. And then this thing here seems to be like a reverser. So when you push the throttle, it pulls one direction and then goes the other. Okay, so here's how we're going to fit it out. So behind the air filter, or the air box I should say, down here, is a big flat area. And you can see I've put the actuator here. I haven't quite figured out where I'm going to mount it yet, but somewhere in here is, is going to be fine. As long as the cable doesn't get too uh, sharp a bend. Um, It'll be good and then the cable comes up around here and it joins the actual throttle cable and I'm, I'm thinking you can zip tie it to the throttle cable as you go around to keep it following the same arc the throttle cable starts up here in the top left and then wraps under here and you can see I've actually already put the end of the actuator I've poked it down through there so you can see what I'm talking about the plan is to attach the steel wire to the throttle cable. So to fix the actuator in place, start from moving around, this little plate is included. The idea is that you clamp it um, and you connect both the existing throttle cable and the actuator cable. Uh, and that way it gets hold in place by some nice strong bolts. And when you're fitting this, pay attention to which way around it goes, because one side is labelled servo, and one side is labelled carb, <coughs> and they're actually different sizes. So, servo I presume is for our small thin wire, and carb is for the bigger existing uh, cable. And obviously you want it to be tight, because if it rattles loose it could cause pretty serious problems. shows you where where it is relative to the engine bay. Now we have to attach that silver braided wire to the throttle braided wire with the wire linkage attachment. Okay, just to explain how this is going to work. So the throttle cable is going to go through here and be clamped by the black grub screw. That's going to tighten down and clamp onto the existing throttle cable. And then the uh, control um, actuator cable is going to go through this hole and be uh, secured on the other side with this clamp. Now we're going to attach the little final end block. Be careful you don't over tighten them because they will strip. So the way it works is that vacuum pump pulls on this, which then pulls on that, which then pulls the throttle. So, after some testing, I found it's actually better to not leave any slack on the uh, connection point. So you'll see there, there's the block, the retaining block, and then next to it on the left is the little silver uh, wire clamp, and it's pushed right up against it. It's not actually pulling on the throttle, like the, it's not so tight that it's pulling on the throttle when it's off, but you don't want to have any slack there. If you leave any slack, it'll take a long time for the, for the uh, cruise control to kick in. So now I'm just going to cable tie everything up using these big cable ties. 
So anytime I'm cutting into the metal of the van, I always use some rust guard. It doesn't really matter which sort you use, but this is just one I got from Bunnings. The kit comes with these little self-tapping screws. Um, so because they're self-tapping, I'm just going to dip them in this rust guard stuff before I drill them in, basically. So what I was doing in the bolts, uh, with the self-tapping screws, one of them went in just fine and held nice and true, but the second one didn't really feel like it was grabbing. I've got a couple of M5 bolts which should do the trick. All right, so there's the bolt through there, a little washer on there. That's a little bolt which I've added. So let's talk about vacuum lines. Now there are a few different places to pull vacuum from, but what I've been told and what I've learned is that looking at the bottom or the front left side of the engine is this big metal pipe here. And this is a good source of vacuum if the camera will focus on it. There we go. And that pipe comes all the way around the side here and goes up here. And there are a few different places that you can actually pull vacuum from. Um, you want to make sure that you're getting the right side of the vacuum because all these pipes that are coming off here go into different places and they often go into these little actuators, these little valves. And so the top part of the valve is the in and the bottom part of the valve is the out. So if you're going to tap from there, make sure you pull from the right side or else if the actuator changes its state, your vacuum might disappear. Um, but there's two places which I'd recommend pulling the vacuum from. On my van, at the back here, there is a little T just sitting here, which has a spare nub. That would be one source. Or if you don't have one of those, if uh, your van's a bit different, the other place you can pull from is down here under the inner cooler. is this nub here. Mine's marked with a little red dot. Yours may not be. So that's just back from the front of the engine a bit. And that will also be a good vacuum source. So you would need to put a bit of pipe in there, put the little T intersection in, and then uh, connect both pipes back up again. So here's the black vacuum pipe going into the vacuum solenoid. And I've just looped it around here just until I've tested that everything works. After that, I'm gonna go back and cut it and then cable tie it properly, but you can see here, I've just plumbed it into that little, little nub there. Right, now it's time to start with uh, <clears throat> the wiring. I think we're gonna start with trying to um, get a fused ignition switch feed for the orange wire. In my case, I've decided to put the command control box in the middle here, inside the, uh, the center console box, just because there's plenty of space. I'm just gonna double-sided tape it in there. So I have taken up half a fair bit of the van, as you can see. You won't need to take this much apart, but I've just been looking for the best way to do things. So you'll need to take off the bottom uh, cover of the steering column. And you may also need to pull down uh, this cover here um, and sort of get things out of the way so you can access this part here. So what you're looking for is this blue connector and this is where we're going to pull power for the accessory rail. So the orange wire is spliced into the blue wire in this blue connector underneath the ignition switch. Keep in mind that there are actually more than one blue wire. There is more than one blue wire in this bundle here. One is blue and red and one is just straight blue and it's the straight blue one that you want. Um, to determine if we've got the right place <clears throat> what we do is we we've put a multimeter in here. Now the probe of the multimeter is going in the end there and it's uh, just in there enough to touch the metal connector and then the negative probe is down here on the uh, earth on the side of the van. And now if you look here, right now it's showing 10 millivolts, which is nothing. And if I can find my keys, there they are. What you should have when you're testing this is if we put it into accessory, the first click, we get 12 volts. So the kit comes with these little blue splicing connectors. 
and then using some pliers you drive this blade through and it pierces both the old cable and the new cable and allows you to connect. I found it easier to unplug it. There's a clip on the other side which you need to push quite firmly so um, push the clip in and you can unplug this side and then this comes down and that makes it much easier to get in here but you may just be able to see there the little blue splicing thingo. And then the ground wire is the green wire which is this one here and right now it's just running across the floor. I'm going to I'll either put it under the carpet or I'll cable tie it up in up in here somewhere so it's out of the way so it doesn't get caught or anything. And the ground point is on the bottom right down here. Um, there's a little connector with a bunch of, of plugs. You can see that there. And a bolt. And that's actually the ground point for the chassis. And that bolt is just the right size to fit through the... Um, the eye terminal, the ring terminal that is um, supplied with the kit. So now at this point is a good point to just check to see if you're getting power and if it's working. So now if you turn on the ignition you should get a red light on the uh, control unit and that means that you're good. And I've noticed that red light goes off after a minute but I think that's normal. Okay, next is time to hook up the uh, brake switch wiring. Now the brake switch wire is the brown wires um, on the system. And to get to the brake switch, you're gonna have to pull off this panel here and also remove the fuse box, or at least let it hang down like this. And the brake switch is that little white, black and white unit there. So the plan is to unplug that. That little white clip we're gonna unplug and we're gonna splice into that. Okay, so now we're gonna hook up the speed sensor and this is the bit where I deviate from the manual a bit. So the manual wants you to attach the speed sensor to the uh, drive shaft, which to be honest is a lot of work and I don't really wanna do that. Um, the series one Delicas have on the back of the instrument cluster um, a speed pulse available. So there's SP pulse there and there's a ground. So we're gonna pull it from that. I got these, these are 5.3 mil red eye terminals. It'll like, look like this, I got them from JCAR. Okay, so I've hooked up the um, blue and black wires, as you can see. So the blue one's going up to SP pulse and the black one into the ground. This is on the back of the um, instrument cluster. And then I've just wired that wire and I've looped it back under here and then down to my control box and I'll tidy all that up later once I've tested that it's working. Okay so we're now up to the last, well second last wire. We have to hook this up to the vacuum pump so you have to get this through the firewall. I'm going to show you where there's a hole in the firewall. So this is looking under the steering wheel toward the back left. You can see this, see this white cable here actually goes into a rubber grommet and that rubber grommet goes through the firewall. So you need to punch a hole in that rubber grommet if there isn't one already. Uh, you should better use the existing hole, but feed the wire through there and it will end up in the engine bay. So ignore Eric, he's not part of the production. And this is where the uh, firewall hole is. And that's the cable coming through the firewall just there. So look for that little hole on the left side of the engine bay. Okay, so we've plugged in the vacuum actuator. You can see there we've got each cable plugged in. It's just, you know, uh, red to red, black to black, blue to blue. And I've just cable tied the cable off so it doesn't touch anything hot. Um, just keep it away from all the other pipes and bits and pieces. And it disappears into the firewall. All right, so last step is to plug in the command controller module, which I've fitted to my dash here and drilled a little hole in. And the other end of that, you need to put the pins into this uh, connector. It's color-coded. Um, just push them in gently. They should go click. They shouldn't need to be forced. If, you, if they don't go in, check your alignment. They should go straight in. And then this goes into the control unit. So, now that everything's hooked back up, um, it's time to test. Suggest you do this before you bolt everything back together. Make sure your electrical wiring is okay. Be sure that anything in the engine bay that's been unbolted, like the intercooler is you know tethered down and there's nothing 
if it's going to get caught in the uh, fans or anything like that. Um, and what you want to be able to do is look at the AP60 for this little light, little LED on the left there. We can do some diagnostics. So the first diagnostic is to turn uh, the car onto accessory mode. So that's the first click, like that. And you should get a red light on the unit, which will go on for a few seconds while it initializes. And then when it goes off, um, you can test by putting your foot on the brake. And you should get a red light every time you put your foot on the brakes. That confirms that the brake switch is working. And then we can test the buttons on the controller. So every time we push set or res, you should get a, a red light. And that's the first part of testing. Okay, so now it's time to perform the second test. And this test, the actuator is working and you're getting pull on the throttle. So the way you do this is on your controller, you want to hold down set while you start the engine and you want to keep it held down for a couple of seconds after you start the engine while it initializes. So I'm going to put the camera here so you can see what I'm doing, hopefully. And we'll put the keys in the ignition and before I turn it, I'm holding set and then into accessory and then starting up, still holding set for a couple seconds and then we can let go and that should put it into test mode. Now we want to push on and that's going to turn on the little green light and now if you keep it on the uh, command box when you hit set the command box will flash a little LED light and what you want to do now is tap set and each time you tap set it's going to pull a little bit tighter on the throttle. And in the manual it says it'll take 20 to 50 times, but in my experience it took more like 100 taps to actually get there. So I'm going to do it now and you'll listen, uh, you'll, you'll hear the engine rev up. So right now we're at idle. The other thing is, um, if you want to stop, you just push the brake and that cancels what you're up to. And you should see the red brake light come on. So we'll go set. And I'm going to tap a whole lot because it took a long time. Depending on how much slack is in your system, it may not take quite as long for you. Um, but I'm still tapping and we're still at idle. So I've yet to test this on the road to see whether or not this is a problem. I may need to reduce the amount of slack in the system, but I'm going to keep tapping. And you should start to hear the, um, the revs increase soon. There we go. So now we're getting a little bit of revs. If I keep tapping set, Still tapping set. That just confirms that the actuator is working. Um, I also wanted to test to make sure that it would um, get enough throttle to actually, you know, drive the van. So I kept going. I'm going to keep hitting set a bit more because really you're going to need to be able to do at least two and a half thousand RPM on the motorway. Make sure you're in park, obviously, and keep your foot near the brake. Stop pressing set now. It seems to have stabilized at about 2000 RPM. A couple more presses. And that's pretty good. And I push the brake to bring it back down to zero. And that's the second test done. Okay, and the last thing to do if you have problems with the cruise control not engaging, I found that it wouldn't engage unless. I cut this small black wire. Okay, so as we're driving along uh, on our third test now, you should be able to see the red light of the control unit blinking as you drive along. Now I'm on the brake right now, which is why it's solid red. And then as I drive along my foot off the brake and I accelerate, you should see a blink, and that's the uh, that's the speed pulse. So it's reading the speed pulses, which means that it's working. Alright, so we're testing the cruise, we're on the motorway, um, doing 80. I'm going to push on on the cruise to turn it on, and I'm going to push set. And what we found is that it takes a few seconds for the cruise control to pick up and take over. And we think that's because I've left a bit too much slack in the cable. But now, my foot is off the gas, and the cruise 
cruise control is now taking over and taking us back up to 80. Because it was a big hill. And uh, it seems to be working quite well.